intro, uh, we'll get started right now with uh, Robert's uh, presentation. Um, so Rob, uh, founder of Sports Over Pro, long term so analyst, covering uh, uh, China Gold International. Um, mm -hmm. Floor is yours. Thank you very much, Jerry. And I just wanted to speak a few minutes about China Gold International. It's a stock that we initiated coverage on back in February, 2020. And it's an interesting one because back then the story was that the company was working through some operational challenges that additional were dealing with debt and, and addressing the debt issue. But the market was looking at that as a little bit more of a risk for the company. Uh, we believed and were confident in that the company could address their operational and debt issues and they have. Uh, operations reports have been uh, very good coming out. Uh, lately, the company has done a great job in increasing their revenues, increasing their profits, even with a modest, uh, a strong but modest increase in, in the gold output, as well as uh, getting favorable terms on the debt restructuring. So the company is doing very well. Uh, in the last two years, it's offered a four and a half times return to investors that may have bought it at 76 U.S., 76 cents US back in February 2020. And now it's trading at uh, over three and a half dollars on, on the US markets. So it's offered a very good return. And the company is also offering a dividend, which is very rare in the space. It's very rare for a gold and silver producer, precious metals producer, or any commodities producer to offer a dividend. And we feel as though uh, the company's done very well the last two years in addressing uh, operational challenges that they've had. And we've always argued that it is also uh, domestically for China, a strategic company, because China, as we know, produces a lot of precious metals and ends up buying domestically most of their precious metals. And a lot of it doesn't hit the open market. And so we knew that there was going to be a built-in demand for, for the end product. And so the company's done a very good job of streamlining operations, increasing output, increasing profits for investors. And I think if you had followed, a, followed this stock back when we wrote about it in Seeking Alpha in February of 2020, you would have done very well. So we see, you know, very bright future for the company. Uh, are impressed by the operations reports that they've had and the earnings reports that they had, and, and think that uh, China Gold is is definitely a, a stock that you may want to own for your portfolio. So that's basically my introduction. Happy to answer any questions if anybody has any, Jerry. Yeah, excellent. Well, we'll leave the Q and A until a bit later. I know that you're okay. very popular, so I'm sure you'll have a. A lot of questions for you uh, after mm -hmm. the forecast, but we'll, we'll maybe head off the floor to uh, SP, SVP of uh, China Gold International, Mr. Jerry C. Can I start right now? Yeah, go ahead, please. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thanks for your attendance at the presentation of the China Gold International today. Uh, my name is Jerry Z. Uh, some, people, some people know me here. It's the uh, executive uh, vice president of the company. And I also like to uh, introduce my colleague who is joining us today. Uh, presentation is Mr. Jamin Wu, who is on behalf of our major uh, the shareholder of China National Gold Group. And also Mr. Yin He is the independent director. He's also the metallurgist mm -hmm. uh, specialist. And um, Mr. Jared Guo is our chief engineer. And also Wei Xiao is another uh, independent director. So uh, uh, before going further, I just want to, uh, after this presentation, if you have any question in detail, so uh, my team here can answer those questions right now. If not, we we'll just write down the detail and do answer that later. <clears throat> um, next page. That is the first of all, as usual, I should show the forward-looking statement in, uh, disclaimer quickly here. That's on the legal protection. Next page. Um, in today's presentation, you will see a very successful and a very exciting growth story. So I will present our case by giving you the quick snapshot of its company. For those who, um, who are not so familiar with the story, and we will outline some of our recent achievements and uh, followed by our 2021 uh, annual result. Um, the operation update and then speak briefly to our assets. And then I will finalize the present sum of metrics to support our value proposition. And in doing so, I hopefully can convince you that the company is indeed this very compelling investment opportunity to you. Next page, please. So, 
The China Gold International uh, have the two operating mines in China, the CSH Gold Mine uh, with the potential extension mine life and the JAMA Copper Gold Polymetallic Mine which is at a stable production stage and with a long mine life is over 30 years. Um, so uh, basically we are the gold and copper producer and operated in China. So our parent company, the China National Gold Group, we call the CNG, is the gold miner with the fully integrated the production and the sales function. Uh, we leverage the, the CNG's strength and the influence to provide us the, uh, with the strong support in mining uh, operation and in the relationship with local government and in the communities. Next week, please. The, the China Gold International is listed, listed uh, in the TSX uh, stock exchange with the symbol of CGG and the dual listing in Hong Kong stock exchange with the symbol of the 2099. Our major shareholder is the CNG, just mentioned, at over 40% ownership. And the other investors, including the Dimensional Advisors, Mary, I'm, I'm, uh, IFM, and the retail investors, another, hold another over 55% of the share. So today, the, uh, the share outstanding is um, uh, 396 million shares, uh, which is fundable between the two stock exchanges. As of the March 28th, the share price is around the four US dollar, presenting at about 1.5 billion US dollar in the market cap, quite big. And the P ratio of this company is what five, Point six, uh, four and five six, and the price to book value, um, the price to book ratio is uh, just about uh, zero eighty six. It's below to one, which suggests that the CGG, I mean the China Gold International, is still very undervalued, despite the recently strong returns uh, in the last two years. Next, <clears throat> next week, please. Okay, so I want people uh, look closely to this slide with this curve, just because that re really reflected the, our uh, current situation uh, since the uh, year 2020. So the job we've done is um, bring the mines uh, to the stage of the stable production, especially after commercial production of the phase two expansion in JAMA copper mine. In the last two years, the CGD stock has performed very well, due to the increasing operation profits and it keeps hitting the records high of the both revenue and production. And that will continue to impress the market. The last year, the company paid out the first special dividend and will pay out this another uh, special dividend um, again uh, in this year, 2022. So for the new investors just listening, we are paying out 100 million US dollar from our net income of 270 million. It's pretty high. That's the uh, high record of the uh, 2021 to investors or 0 pay 25 cents per share. So that's the, um, uh, at the, the as of the, the share price, about four US dollar per share. So that's the, uh, the dividend yield is around um, the 6%. If the back few days, few weeks, uh, the period the, when the price uh, was lower, that might be even higher. So we have a good job, continue to deliver our promises, where the work we have not done yet is to see our good work has not fully converted into the share price appreciation, even though the price job since the last year, but not that, that's still not enough. So, but as you were able to see to, uh, and uh, detected from this today's the presentation that that can be far away. Next one. <clears throat> so uh, just continuing my topic is this company is a, uh, a, our good job is not a fully converted to our share price appreciation. You can see that comparison in the table. This table, a uh, little bit busy. Uh, you may not see that clearly, but I can, you can, you can see that it's very highlighted. The first line the highlighted in yellow is our company's the, uh, the multiples. The very bottom line, the brown is the average of the industry. You can see that the table shows the comparison to our peer group. 
it's about the 1 billion market cap miners with the very similar uh, the copper production and the gold production. So the China, National, uh, China Gold International is the highest dividend yield. I just mentioned it's the 6% uh, percent plus uh, currently. And the low <clears throat> earning multiples of the PE ratio, PB ratio, and the EV EBITDA ratio, you can see that's lower that. So we still have room to grow and that's very cheap, the company <clears throat> for invest. I'm sorry, it's a little bit dry. <clears throat> Next week, please. <clears throat> so now I uh, just um, moving on to the 2021 uh, annual result. Next. So as you can see, the across all the metrics, you see that the table, uh, China Gold International have the, the uh, outperformed 2021 revenue increased by 32% to 1.1 billion US dollar. The main operating earning went up by a uh, staggering 92% to 400 million US dollar. The income from operation gets 333 million, uh, doubling that by the 116%. The net income is over 136% to the 269 million. That's a really record high. Next page. So as you can see, the total production gold was uh, 244,000 ounces with the annualized 1% increase from the 2020. And the copper production jumped to the 190 million pounds. That is the 6% increase uh, since the 2018. It's mainly due to the, the, the Jama mine, the stable operation after commercial production of the phase two expansion. Uh, next page. So the, um, and you, you can see that the annualized the, over the 10 years revenue has been increasing uh, by the compounded this 13.8% of the company and they're slated to continue. Next page. And the margin, they're increasing as well, both the gross and the net profit margin, you can see that the trend is here. And next page. And the cash flow has been increasing as the the cumulative is 1.4 billion over the last 10 years since the 2012, and 417 million US dollar in last year, 2021. So EBITDA, they hit the, uh, high, the her, um, historic high in 2021 as well, with over 509 million as well. It's quite high. Next page, please. So here, this shows the improving the financial position of the company. They, as our cash balance has been steadily grow and our debt to uh, asset ratio has fallen and we have repaid it quite a lot of the debts. We got our balance sheet very strong and um, pretty much in order, uh, ready to go to move to the next stage of our uh, next growth. They, by the end of the financial period of the 2021, the cash balance is the 208 million of US dollars. In particular, I would have mentioned it again, is the, uh, we, allocate, we allocate the 100 million of the cash balance to dispute, <clears throat> to dispute the dividends to the investors this year. Next one. Now I'm moving, <clears throat> moving to the key operation highlights from our two um, uh, operating mines. Next. Let's start uh, from the Jama mine. From let's start from these Jama mine. Uh, the uh, really look like the uh, panoramic. The photo, what you can see, they give you uh, the visual impression, the size and the scale of the, how big the, the Jama mine is. The both side is the two faces, the uh, the operation, and office buildings and the potential areas. You can see it's a beautiful scene here. Next one. The Jama is a polymetallic mine with the gold, silver, copper, moly, zinc, and lead. The Jama mine has the significant uh, the resource. You can see that in the in the table. I would I would pick up the three major metals from this uh, uh, the table to give you an idea of the size 
from these resources. As of the end of December of the 2021, the MNI mineral resource for JAMA are 1.4 billion tons of war at the grid of 0.4 point of copper, 0.1 gram per ton gold, and 5.5 gram per ton silver for the metal content of the fixed uh, 5.6 million, million tons of copper, 4.5 million ounces of gold, and the 250 million ounces of silver, not including the 2P economic uh, reserves of 2.2 million tons of copper, about 2 million ounces of gold, and 122 million ounces of silver. So you, if you can separate this the metal, you can see that even, even the one of metal, you can form a mine. The processing capacity in JAMA is over 50,000 tons per day and has a long time, long man life at over 30 years. Next page, please. <clears throat> the ore processing uh, in, the, in, the, in the 2021 was over 16 million tons and the copper production, this, the surplus is 190 uh, million pounds of copper. Next one. In the 2021 operation, uh, the copper recovery continue, the recovery rate to continue improve, now it is to the 85. The silver, um, the, I mean, the byproduct is the, 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 the recovery rate just improved as well, because the management put a lot of effort on the improving the recovery by utilizing uh, lots of the new technology and the work with the R&D, uh, our internal and uh, external R&D system. Next page. The cost, you can see that the, uh, the last year, the cost uh, is a little bit increased. Uh, I guess they, due to the, uh, the two major reasons, because the, the company um, uses a dynamic kind of great policy that pro provide us a flexibility to adapt to the market variations. And which means that during the higher market price uh, for the metals, we can maximize the selling of the lower uh, the great ore. So the another reason to cost this, uh, the cost uh, and the increase a little bit is the currency exchange rate, the fluctuation. Um, because the function currency of our mine, uh, which is inside China, is the RMB, where the reporting currency is the uh, denominated in USD. So that's the, always impacted by the uh, exchange rate. Uh, next one. Uh, that's one is the, uh, the similar thing, I think, hold on. Uh, which, is, which shows the very uh, the similar the reason why the, uh, uh, the, 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 the cost cost a little bit higher. But this slide to give you another idea is because the dynamic and the, the, the cut of the great policy, the confidence is coming from we have the really high grade uh, underground the, the ore exists in Jama mine. So that's the uh, that's our confidence come from. And that's the, how we can use the, the dynamic uh, low grade policy. Next. <clears throat> so that one is uh, increasing that profit in Jama. The operating earnings year over year, and uh, the 44% increasing in the revenue. It says it's all, you can see that it's the means so everything. Next one. The drilling program on this uh, is on the way to discover more zones at JAMA where the tremendous the potential uh, lies there. So the 12 holes over 17,000 and to come. So that's when it's really the, the big potential, but right now the uh, company is focused to uh, keep in, improving uh, the recovery rate, uh, keeping in, improving the pro current production for now. That's our focus point. Next. So right now let's move on to another, the mine, the CSH gold mine. Next. So CSH gold mine is a large scale open pit heat leaching, very simple uh, the operation, which they reserved uh, with um, of the uh, nice uh, 900,000 ounces of gold 
uh, almost three million ounces uh, MNI plus the inferred. Um, the current, currently, the mine life in, of the CSH gold mine uh, will be the four years uh, with the stable and pro, pro, uh, pro, uh, profitable uh, mine, mine life. But well, keeping in mind, uh, we just mentioned uh, this mine life is not only the, the four years profitable mine life left, but also it's big potential. I will give some update later. Move next. Like I mentioned, the operation has been uh, on the stable in 2021 and also in the next four years. And you can see that the, uh, the recovery rate is keep up and keep improving because the heat bleaching does the year by year gra gradually uh, up to the uh, 60 or and above. So right now it's already like a 55 uh, and 0.39 percent is the tolerance to the design the target. Um, the next one. So you can see that the similar reason to the JAMA, you can see that the cash cost uh, is a little bit higher uh, to the previous year, it's due to the two uh, the major reasons. One is the way I get into uh, a lower, a little bit lower uh, the grid zone <clears throat> because the grid uh, for the, the uh, for this mine is very very sensitive, and it also exchange rate fluctuation is the another uh, impact to the cash cost. But you can also notice that the OEM sustaining cost is drop uh, a little bit as well. It's because it's a really mature and a stable uh, phase for this uh, for for this mine. That's when it's the uh, significant drop for that. Next week, next page. Now. This one, and uh, kind of a little bit busy, but in one word, it's in the center. This, you can, you can, you can, you can see that it's the wording. I can read that wording for you. This exploration of the potential down deep, the mineral resources will effectively extend in my life, which will increase the value of CGG. So that one is, we have not yet uh, disclosure uh, the detail yet, but over the course of the next two months, uh, we will uh, disclose this progress step by step. Uh, within the next uh, two months, we're gonna put out the first one is update the uh, latest uh, technical report for the CSH, CSH gold mine. Uh, how much uh, re resources we found and added. And after that, a step by step, we will put out the PEA, the how to utilize those new found, new discovered um, the, the resources and uh, pre-feasibility study, and also feasibility study. That one is maybe any, any time when to the second half of this year and sometime next year. So anytime when it's uh, ready to go, we'll um, put it out uh, right away. So that one is another really highlight for the CSH mine. Uh, next page. <clears throat> uh, some additional uh, clothing highlights about China Gold International uh, to the many new investors who uh, may not uh, be aware of. Uh, next one, next page. Um, we have uh, uh, not not this. Do you can you back up one? Page? Yes, uh, we have a few the highlights. The key highlights were mentioned for the here. It's a larger uh, strategic investor. We have uh, the strong balance sheet, uh, the low cost of debt, uh, the long mine life, right? And the potential uh, to, to grow. The next one. So this one is uh, specifically uh, dimensioned. What is the, uh, what, I, what I mean uh, by the low financing, the cost. You can see that uh, we have the very stable in, in the credit rate. Uh, by the standard, uh, standard pool for the triple B manners, uh, which give us the opportunity to get the quite low. The annual interest rate is 2.83% for the three years. Uh, three years, the USD uh, 300 million uh, unsecured bond. 
So that band is very clear. In addition to that, in uh, the in local China, there's some local bank will give us the uh, the low finance uh, access as well. You can see the the table on the right. Next page. So this one is to show you the Saudi innovation in mining. That's a pretty popular idea right now in the industry. And we, we just follow that closely, follow the pace of the new trend of the innovation in mining, uh, including uh, uh, by the utilizing our very strong the RSD, uh, R, R, R&D, the system, and great expertise in the workplace uh, and the, the ESG, the compliance style. So you can see that's you know, the picture. Can the young lady, the young girl, is the operator that the uh, the underground the vehicles, electric vehicles, remote control, just like uh, the video game. And uh, you can see the picture uh, left corner um, with the uh, electric, uh, the, just no man uh, operated the vehicles. That's, I think it's the loader, the underground loader. Uh, next one. Yeah, the company is to really pay um, more attention to the uh, social responsibility, CSR, and more, you know, there's the uh, attention to the ESG. Uh, because right now there's the uh, higher and higher uh, standard uh, the industry is asked to, to follow. So we, do, we just follow this uh, uh, ESG standard, but we just make sure this our each step just to make sure that's the uh, ESG uh, compliant. That's the really, uh, we, we cannot see we, we, uh, we have re reached the highest standard, but we just follow the pace. We just the, um, uh, follow the uh, ESG standard, try to be higher and higher standard. We can, you, can, you can see that we can put in all the stakes uh, for, the, for, the, for the company. Uh, we pay more attention on that. Since the 2016, the Hong Kong Stock Exchange asked the company, all the issuers to disclose their ESG report. And we just exactly follow the rule. And TSX side is not yet. Uh, to, uh, anytime they, uh, they ask for that, we're gonna follow. The last page is our uh, the strategy and metrics for our potential, the uh, MNA the policy. Um, this one is a long-term topic and we just put it in things here. Uh, the m and is not only globally looking for the opportunity, but also inside of China. And they also the uh, some good quality asset uh, hold right now um, by the CNG, our parent company, the major shareholder. And they just the, uh, committed uh, to us to inject to the, the asset inject uh, when the time is right. Uh, that one is the, all the, uh, the metrics here. I just, we just list it here. Uh, you can read it later. So that's basically everything here. Right now, they hand it back to the uh, the host uh, to the Q and A session. Well, thank you very much. Great, <clears throat> thanks for that, Jerry. Uh, excellent presentation. Uh, we'll open up the floor for a bit of Q and A. So please submit your questions, uh, guys, uh, on the, the Zoom chat, or uh, we can just open it up for discussion. But just sub submit it, and then we can uh, uh, go through some of the Q and As. I'm sure uh, people are asking about maybe some of the mechanics uh, on the dividend. So um, I think right now we have a question from Graham um, about the, so Jerry, the, uh, the Jersey, the, the dividend policy, uh, is it expected to continue in the near future or is it a, this is the second time that it's been done, right? Yeah, um, regarding to the dividend, uh, you can notice that this year is still like special uh, dividend payout. Right. Uh, the company has not uh, made any promise uh, for the, the dividend policy, but uh, you can see that from since the last year, uh, last year, uh, 2021, uh, we uh, the, ever the first time ever in this company uh, we paid uh, uh, the special dividend, and this year as well. And you, you, that's why I just double and triple and precise our um, the dividend yield that high, which means we just uh, really um, uh, pay more attention to the return to the uh, our investors. So in the future, so any time, as long as the uh, net profit is there, right? So we're gonna um, pay the, uh, the, the dividend. Um, 
if uh, if there's still like a special dividend or a dividend policy, we will see, but no promise for the uh, no promises for the dividend policy. But we can promise it. Uh, promise we uh, when the time is right, uh, we will uh, keep paying the dividend to the shareholders. Great. Okay. Uh, our next question comes from Terry Orslin. He's uh, Terry's a well-known fund manager, uh, mining analyst in Toronto. So. He's asking uh, about the valuation of the company. How, how do we value uh, our company? So maybe we'll go to the comp chart here. So Jerry, um, uh, Terry's asking about uh, how we feel like about the value of, of China Gold right now. Well, um, for the uh, for the valuation, um, we we just you know, or just you as the analyst, you can take. The, uh, the common practice uh, to do, you can use the, uh, the, the, the multiples, right? To uh, starting from there, to give the preliminary picture to see what's the position the China Gold International is, right? We can uh, stress it again, the emphasis again, we are lower valued, but also we can look into that, into our both the mine site, the, um, the, the copper polymeric, uh, Polymetallic mine, which they given that the big, uh, the uh, the resource base and it stabilized the, the production, especially after the commercial production um, of the phase two expansion, and with the long time of the mine life, profitable, right? And we can keep him uh, improve over the uh, recovery rate. Um, that one you can make uh, the bigger, even make the profit even bigger. And for the uh, CSH, uh, the gold mine, um, in addition to the four years, profitable year and the demand life, and it also, like I mentioned, there is a big potential there. That's really where the value will add the value uh, to this company. Um, we right now, the, the company, like I said, we focus on the current operation for now. For the potential m and Unless there's really good quality of the targets. I mean, if the I'm at, uh, if I'm at a is really accretive, otherwise we won't uh, move toward to that uh, that way. So uh, the any step be uh, the next uh, growth, you can see that our potential, uh, our strategy uh, is pretty clear there. So, so all the potential there, you can value from that aspect as well. Okay, great. Oh, um, okay, good um, so Graham uh, asked about uh, another follow-up question. Uh, are you expecting, Jerry, the cost to drop in the coming years on the AISC, on, on the two assets? Um, I'm sorry, you're saying what is uh, the question again? Uh, uh, sorry, Graham uh, is asking, are you expecting to lower the cost further, uh, all in sustained costs? Yes, yeah, that, that's for sure. That's for sure. Um, you can see that uh, you know, maybe I, I, I speak too fast that you missed a few words there. So last year, you can see the JAMA, the cash cost increase is the, the main reason is we just um, use our uh, dynamic lower grade cutoff policy. So because you can, you can given that very strong the metal price the last year, we, you know, that's pretty logic for the people to uh, try the best maximum to use the utilize of a lower uh, grade, the ore, but still they can uh, they generate the, the profit. So that's why they cost it, um, um, the, the, the cash costs uh, higher. But for the long, longer term, I also mentioned the confidence the, to, for us, we can use that the lower grade, it's because we do have the higher grade zone on the, the, the on, on, on ground. We call it, if you look back at our new series, we are mentioning that the, the level 4300, that, that level of the mining, that's the really the highest uh, grade zone is. So when the, uh, the metal price is fractured again, we can keep using the, the dynamic uh, the policy again to mitigate the risk uh, of the cost. We're, we were confident to say the, the cost of uh, will be reduced if we want. Great. Okay, sounds good. The uh, next question comes from Keith Spence. Uh, I'm sure I think uh, you know uh, Keith as well very much, very well uh, on board PDAC. So Keith is asking uh, plans to grow the company by acquisition in the near term. 
So obviously we've seen a number of um, different uh, deals rumored in discussion over the years. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's one is uh, that, you know, I don't know the, I know it's what the rumors are. It's the, the, it's already old story there. Um, but right now you can see that it really depends. It's not only the business uh, decision, not only, I mean, not only impacted uh, by the, the market uh, only, but also the political situation as well. So right now it's really uh, it's full of the uncertainties in this world globally, you can see that. And um, our magic is still there. Actually, if you can see all the miners, their metrics for the m a is almost the same, right? So profitable, um, gold mines, or gold and copper mines. That's our target for sure, because we're a gold copper producer. Uh, in a safe jurisdiction, sizable, right? So that's almost the, almost the same for all the miners. But for us, that's really, it's our metrics as well. We're seriously looking for that. We keep looking for things. Um, but like I said, that's not only uh, to looking for the uh, targets globally, but also inside of China. If any target come up, we just go ahead to pick it up, uh, including our um, parent company inject uh, from them. They hold some good quality uh, um, targets as well. So we, we just take that into short. We keep looking for things for sure. So if you or anyone have the, uh, the, the, the message, or the, the potential, the, the opportunity, just let us know. Okay, great. Uh, another question from Perry uh, Orslan, uh, asking about our, is CGG satisfied with the uh, asset size and critical mass, or are you looking to grow uh, this international division as well? And would you look outside of China or Asia? Would you look outside of Asia? But still, like I'm at A? Yeah. Well, <laughs> again, so anywhere there's the, uh, um, the, 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 the jurisdiction is safe. It doesn't matter in the, in the where, right? As long as we, we can go first, this allowed us uh, um, to go, that's the first thing. We can enter it to there. And then also that jurisdiction should be safe, right? Yeah, anywhere. Definitely, okay. Just maybe to add uh, Jerry as well, uh, so China national goal, which was 40% of CGG, Yes, uh, Terry, they they have operations outside of China, right? In Africa and, and they do, yeah. They, uh, they so. yeah, but that meant it just, just belongs to uh, their commitment, right? The commitment to the, uh, to, the, the to, to to the asset injection to us, right? Whatever they 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 owned overseas of China, like in Central Asia, in Africa, or within the, the asset within China, whatever it is. As long as the, the, the good condition, the will take it. The good quality, what time is right. Okay, great. If, they, uh, if they go overseas of China, the jurisdiction again, that one is a really major factor because we have to consider. Okay, excellent. Uh, so we're about half an hour through the presentation and Q&A. So any more questions for uh, Jerry, please submit it. I, I know there are uh, questions previously about the mechanic of the dividend. So it's 25 cents US per share either it's JNFF or CGG or 2099 uh, Hong Kong, uh, which will be, I think the cutoff date, um, uh, Jerry, is uh, 20, so the 20th of April, right, on record. Uh, yes, that's a record day, yeah. yeah. And it will be distributed in June, correct? June 15th. Yeah, so it looks like the share price has continued to move up uh, in the recent yeah. days as yeah. a result. Not far away. Yeah, that's yeah. not enough. I think it's not fully converted, but still room. Yeah, I mean, it's still a very good yield right now. Uh, about yeah, 6%. yeah, yeah. And, and uh, maybe in terms of the catalyst for 2022, uh, what else do you have lined up? So you have drilling, you have op possible acquisition, uh, maybe lower cost, uh, anything the shareholders can look forward to? Yes, I think you have already mentioned, I think it's the driver or the catalyst the, uh, for the 2020. Um, I would um, say the first one is the potential of a CSH gold mine. Uh, you will see that the, uh, the first uh, disclosure will put out the, uh, the updated the technical report and to say how much the new fundings, uh, the new discovery, uh, new uh, resources we discovered. That means it could be one. 
And another one, we just keep uh, keep the uh, improving the uh, recovery rate. That's the key to make the bigger uh, the profit. And that's when the confidence is also come from again from the uh, higher uh, the grade. Also, the new technology, and we, because we have the very strong the R and D system there yeah, in place, uh, we we keep uh, improving that. Uh, keep trying so hard to uh, to improve in both sides the recovery rate. That's two major things. It's already uh, yeah, the strong enough uh, to be the catalyst to add the value to this company. Got it. Got it. Okay. Uh, are there any more questions? If not, we can open up maybe for just like a quick uh, 10, 20, 15 minutes chat. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll basically open up uh, everyone's uh, chat discussions um, and feel free to submit questions or speak. Um, I'm sure many of you have seen Jerry over the years as well. Um, yeah, feel free to chime in and, and uh, open up your open up your videos. Well, we can have a kind of yeah. a bit of an open forum for discussion. And Rob, uh, any questions for Rob as well um, about about his channel, Goals Over Pros, and uh, any other picks that he's he's had? Uh, so since Rob covered China Gold in twenty. Twenty in late 2019, the stock is up. Has been, I think, up about six, seven hundred, six, seven hundred percent, which is uh, definitely very, uh, very impressive. Yeah. And Rob McKen, you're gonna have more material to update your report. Yeah, that's right. Uh, this uh, has been a, it's been a great report. Yeah. yeah so I, I do, I do have a question. Um, I believe this is a fairly long life mine. What does the mine life look like uh, for your project? Um, for the Java mine, it's about, oh, it's funny. It's about, you can see that it's 30, 30 years, around mm -hmm. the 30 years. And uh, for the SSH mine, um, currently, currently, uh, the four years, all the way up to 2025, mm -hmm. um, within these four years, that's just like a, uh, we keep this level production provision level uh, and uh, the uh, streaming ratio streaming ratio is it's going to be lower and lower over the year and uh, the grade of the ore they keep almost the same so mm -hmm. well, what i can say is that for next the, uh, the years it could be uh, stable and profitable for four years after the four years if without this new addings new discoveries that one is another four year to wash out. We call it wash out. Maybe there's no, the mining activity is the stop, but in the heap, there's still some in the circuit to be called a circuit. There's still some inventory online. It's still there. So the wash is out for the next four years. But right now we can push it over because the, 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 the down deep that the, uh, the new uh, discoveries uh, will add the uh, sales as mine life for sure. But I cannot say too much because that's not disclosed yet. Um, in the next two months, it was, you, will, you will see it. There the, um, will be, uh, uh, the mind lab will be extended. Okay. And just overall for, for your minds, what is the, the exploration program for the next year or two in terms of expanding your resource? Wow, that's a good uh, question. I do have some number, but uh, cannot uh, remember with that. I, I just check with my team. Is anyone in my team? Uh, yeah, maybe Gerald or yeah, Gerald or, or, or yeah. Jamming, Mr. Wu or who, yeah. whoever mm -hmm. who, who know this number. Uh, could you please? Yeah, um, this is Gerald. Yes, it's a very good question. And uh, for example, for Jama, for this year, we in addition to the program last year we initiated, we uh, we are going to continue to finish that part. Also, uh, for another part which is Bai Mutang. In that area is also our GMR's another uh, exploration license area. We are going to do more prospecting and uh, renaissance work for this year. Mm -hmm. Try to expand our resource space step by step. Yeah, if you remember Rob, uh, JAMA, which is uh, the long mine life uh, copper mm -hmm. asset, it, it was encountering lower grades about two years ago. So mm -hmm. this is exactly on schedule. It's starting to hit the high grade portion. Okay. Good. Um, 
Harry or Mike from Kiko, any any questions? Uh, I think Mike, you're on mute still. So. No, thanks. Thanks. I'm good. Okay. Sounds thanks, good. Jerry, for doing this. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's an interesting name. Definitely. Sounds good. Um, Mike McRae or I see Ken from KPMG is here. So <laughs> good to see everybody. So good. No, thanks for all the info. Where's the next update? <laughs> Go ahead. What is the um, next update? <laughs> yeah. Um, anytime we, we think is the, uh, to, we, we're okay. We're open to that. We say, yes, we can do it as many as possible. <laughs> if people really like us. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I think it is the uh, next one. If you call us the update is the, uh, the updated technical report. You can see that potential. Okay. of the our CSH mind and how much we uh, uh, we got of the new resource addition. Yeah, I mean, what's what's yeah. really impressive is just uh, the long term growth of the company. If you look back 10 years ago, this company was yeah. doing a few hundred million market cap. It went through a bit of a soft flat period when they were ramping up and you're seeing revenue. I mean, obviously, commodity prices went really well, too, but it's compounded 14 percent in the last few years, which is very, very impressive. Um, yeah, so it's uh, hard to see uh, why, especially with a strong dividend, one of the highest in yield in the sector. I mean, many of the peers in same size, if not larger, doesn't even pay a dividend, right? So that kind of shows you how much free cash flow companies paying. Uh, the EV EBITDA is uh, certainly in line and, and better than most. Uh, and oh, when we had a question earlier about, uh, about the Shenzhen Hong Kong connect. Where is that, Jerry? I'm sorry. Uh, you see? Yeah. yeah. What what is this uh Shenzhen Hong Kong stock in there? Oh, you can oh okay. Oh I mean oh sorry, I just missed this point. The um in this PowerPoint, uh there we mentioned something like a Shenzhen and Hong Kong connection, but some people don't really understand that. Um it's because we uh, do this thing in Hong Kong, stock exchange. Um that is some barrier for the uh, the mainland of China in West in Westerns. Um, they are not able to directly uh, make their investment uh, to the Hong Kong the stock. So this connection uh, from Shenzhen Stock Exchange, that's the um, uh, located in the mainland of China. This connection give the chance to the mainland of China to the um, uh, to make their investment to Hong Kong stock. And so you think about that, that how big the investor base. That meant the uh, how much the uh, one point three billion people base. I cannot say that everybody is the uh, investors, but it's the big base there. So that is really significantly increase our uh, liquidity after uh, we get into that. There are some criteria to uh, sitting to 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 enter this connection. It's not everyone issuer, and that's an old issuer. Uh, is qualified to sit in uh, in this connection. So that would be your first step. You have to be uh, uh, the, the Hang Seng Index. And then after the, uh, the committee, a small group of people, um, they make, make their judgment by our market cap uh, for the past uh, 12 months. And also your uh, the profit, your operation, all kind of metrics. And then they, uh, they got the result. I'll give you a great signal and you can into that connection. So that one is a really big, really big thing for us. Great. Wow, that, that was certainly- Hi, Jerry, this is, this is me. This is oh, me. Oh, go ahead. Yes. Uh, I'm in Hong Kong. Uh, in terms of the uh, uh, Shenzhen Hong Kong Stock Connect, I would like to let you know that after the company entered this connection, yes. our daily trading volume at Hong Kong Stock Exchange almost doubled or tripled. So it's quite a, a, a very large scale uh, investor base support from mainland of China. Thank you. Very good point. I mean, it's, it's a very recognizable name. Obviously China Gold is, China National Gold is the largest gold producer in China. So having a 1.4 billion additional investment, <laughs> definitely much larger than across North America. Yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, I think that's all the questions we have so far. Uh, we, we, 
this segment has been recorded and it was live streamed as well. So we'll be distributing this afterwards to uh, all the registrants, uh, registrants that couldn't make the call. We had about 25 online at, at one point. But uh, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us for the presentation. Thanks, Rob, for doing a bit of a keynote intro. Uh, you know, a lot of people didn't really believe the company when, two years ago when, when it was operating. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. So uh, we'll we'll readjourn uh, for maybe the next quarterly uh, conference update. Jerry and team, uh, thanks, uh, Graham. Thanks for Kevin, uh, Gerald, uh, Darren Wu from, from Hong Kong, the Hong Kong office for China Gold. Uh, the directors Ian Wei Xiao and uh, various retail investors uh, for joining. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next call. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. Yeah. So if you Thank have more questions, just send uh, send your question to Gemini, and open to answer. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone.